This podcast is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries. Unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability, criminal prosecution, and the wrath of the tall man. <laughs> Boy! And I waited so patiently, if you could take off, don't wait me. Tomorrow. Oh, listen to this. Venom returns. Bingo. Yeah, you brock. Tell the world there's gonna be carnage. You bet your ass. Even when I got kicked to the curb. Venom, let there be carnage, including the song Last One Standing by Skyler Gray, featuring Polo G, Mozzie, and Eminem. Directed by Andy Serkis, rated PG-13, exclusively in movie theaters tomorrow. Little Hand says it's time to rock and roll. Bring the noise. And welcome back to 90 for Chill, the podcast. This is your host, Cool Movie Starth, is my official nickname as per the ID10T podcast. Uh, give the Stanley Tucci episode a listen to just for my ego's sake. But Russ Stevens is the name that most people know me by unless you're in iowa with russ staley or springfield yeah i know we're not talking about my wrestling stuff the cm darth letterbox handle should be enough so tonight i went and tried to avoid the trick-or-treaters i just don't exactly like people peeking into my under 600 dollar apartment and see that oh he lives under 600 dollars because he buys expensive stuff I just hope I'm not announcing it loud enough through these thin walls. Ugh, but I digress. So, avoiding trick-or-treaters led me to the cinema to see a movie that qualifies, and I think might be the first Marvel-related movie to qualify since, I don't know, probably Albert Pion's Captain America 1990. And that featured tonight was Venom, Let There Be Carnage. You know what, I'm gonna just say, I don't know if I'm gonna buy the uh, 4K when it comes out. I mean, it's a fun enough movie. I didn't mind it, but it's just narrative gets lost real fast. Um, It's a slow start trying to establish uh, Cletus, Carnage, his motivations. You know what? After how just goofy the first Venom got to, it's kind of like, eh, maybe we should be getting right to that kind of stuff. So, heck, I could have cut this down to an 80-minute movie. Huh. But, again, I will digress. I mean, if you like the first Venom, you're going to enjoy this one. Um, and it's just, really, once it, it just doesn't build to the craziness, I'd say, like the first feature. It just starts being crazy right off the bat. Narrative's almost lost, so you're going to have to really love Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy's Venom, and the supporting characters from the first film, like Scott Reed as Eddie Brock's past girlfriend, played by Michelle Williams' new beau, and I don't want to go into spoilers. And Mrs. Chen, I really need to go and pull up IDMDB to get her name, who does a great job as the convenience store owner that Venom serves as a protection racket on to prevent him from the bad guys from robbing the place. So once this uh, film gets rolling, it's going to be fun. But as I say, the narrative's just not there. And let me at least try to get my notes up that I jotted down. And sometimes, as I say with the craziness, there seems to be an ode to one Joel Schumacher's Batmans. Venom and glow sticks. I just... Flashbacks, man. So let's see. I'm actually working through this pretty fast. Really, the biggest problem with the Venom features is... It would so benefit from an R rating. Like the special effects, the details, the gore that would come with them. You just can't have those details. Like you can't have a tornado symbiote going through San Quentin and just, oh, body gets absorbed, body disappears, and we don't see it again. So work towards that R rating again. Maybe uh, give Sony the Blade franchise. I don't know if I'm with the MCU. And it's kind of weird because they do do some flirting with the MCU in the uh, mid credit sequence. There isn't a post credit sequence. So, hey, again, you do save time. And I think Andy Serkis didn't really add anything um, in this directorial effort that uh, 
Ruben Fleischer wouldn't have had in it. It is interesting. It's a Tom Hardy penned uh, script uh, alongside a writing partner, uh, another producer, of course. Honestly, probably the most fun stuff about the feature is just seeing the relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom how it's evolved people were saying oh it's got homoerotic tones to it or and i wouldn't go as far as say that uh these are basically two people who i think are just dealing with knowing that they're stuck together trying to make the best for each other probably more venom than eddie which is a nice nice little touch it's like you really do care about the uh namesake of the franchise as for uh, Woody Harrelson, his performance is solid. Uh, same thing with uh, Naomi Harris as um, we don't get her nickname. Helen Mirren is wasted. Stephen Graham, I'm hoping big things for him after this feature in terms of this franchise. So yes, I do want to see a Venom 3. So maybe that's all I can really say about this one is that, yeah, I would go to see another one of these movies. I don't know if I'm going to go and pay ten dollars down the road to get film just to be a marvel completist on my itunes collection hence why i'm doing this podcast now instead of waiting for the physical release otherwise i guess i do have to comment that i don't know if i really dig hip-hop in my marvel universe i know obviously black panther had that but that was more i guess acceptable because of the uh, culture and it kind of just feels like um we're dealing with cultural appropriation i just don't know what the market is for this franchise how much more they really need to focus on the humor i mean i guess you'd still need that r rating to like really be tongue very long tongue in cheek to really make this franchise something that you're gonna buy over and over again but with that said, I would say if you had a choice between Spider-Man F- Far From Home and Venom Let There Be Carnage, I would take on the uh, Todd McFarlane created character in Venom instead of Spidey. That's just my opinion with those two features, but if the tease in the middle of the tr- credits adds anything to it, and of course there's a trailer for No Way Home, the next Spider-Man movie, things could really correct themselves it's nice to see that we're at least teasing the mcu it's gonna get interesting if you just like crazy tom hardy this is gonna be worth at least a matinee showing i think that's what uh was the cheaper item on my receipt when compared to the popcorn and i guess i could also go on about movie theaters experience right now everybody's doing assigned seating but is everybody buying their ticket online? Because look, man, I went and picked first person in the theater, picked my spot. So it should have been the first unavailable seat on the screen. And then everybody's bloody surrounding me. Like, come on, give me two rows. We're, it's a small theater. We're all going to get that middle seat. I digress. Thanks again for coming to 90 for chill. The podcast, hopefully all goes well this week. We will have Bill and Ted, the trilogy uh, discussed featuring uh, Michael Dubois, who did the uh, Commando episode, and hopefully the audio is going to hold up completely. I look forward to it. I hope you look forward to it. But if you want to be the next guest after that on 90 for Chill, the podcast, feel free to send me an email at, well, to rustthebus07 at gmail.com. That is R-U-S-S-T-H-E-B-U-S-0-7 at gmail.com. To be a guest on the podcast, send me an email or you can direct message me on Twitter. The handle is at catbusrus at C-A-T-B-U-S-R-U-S-S. Just give me a theme, a film, a director, or an actor, and just focus on sub-100 minutes, 100 minutes stuff, and we'll have some podcast gold. Thanks again for coming to 90 for Chill the Podcast. Uh, rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And if you want to talk crap about my podcast, please direct that to Twitter. Let's not mess around with the algorithm, please. And thank you. Otherwise, uh, thank you, Stacia Harden, for being an inspiration to all the success I'm trying to achieve. And I'm sure everyone else you touched in your life feel the same. Thanks again for coming to the 90 for Chill the Podcast, and see you next week. Can I hear a wahoo?